Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Poncho and this is the rise and slight downfall about a duo you guys will know as Skengdo and AM from 410. Today, we'll be discussing why I think that although not as relevant in the scene right now, and not as quote-unquote hot as they once were, I believe that next year in 2021, they have a very good chance to be crowned Kings of Drill for that year, and if not crowned Kings for the year, then I do believe that they'll once again be back on top of the game. Now, some of you watching might disagree with me, and that's fine, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but let's take a look at their story so far, and why I've come to the conclusion they'll be back on top of Drill, and then you guys let me know your thoughts on this topic down in the comment section below. So AM and Skengdo, for you guys who don't know, are from the Myatts Field Estate, or what is now known as the Oval Quarter in Brixton, with the estate being labelled Baghdad. Now, I'm not going to deep dive into the history of 410 and where they've came from, but if you want to know the backstory all the way from when they were formerly known as OC, then I'll leave it Keezy London's Reddit post linked down in the description. He broke down 410's history, and if you're interested on how everything came together, then I really suggest you go and check it out, because he breaks it all down in detail. But in 2013, OC, which 410 were formerly known as, would change their name to 410 due to media scrutiny and the main leaders leaving road life behind them. Around this time, as I previously just said, the Myatt's Field Estate was replaced by Modern Apartments and was renamed to Oval Quarter, so members took Oval Quarter and flipped it to make 410, which they would go under today. Again, 410 would have rappers that went under the name OC, but for context of this video, we'll be skipping over that part, but again, the Reddit post is linked down in the description which breaks it all down into detail. So, in 2013, rappers would then go under the name 410 and would release multiple songs, but it was more road rap, which was pretty much what everyone was doing around that time anyway. At this point in 2013, AM or Skengdo weren't making music with 410 members, but I did find this song from AM, which dates back to 2013. <laughs> Got 25, got 20 guys with 20 knives, but five man with 20 lives. Do the math and max, that's four five. Shoot a four five at your jawline. So you pussy niggas better exercise or ski ski when you see the guys with a big mat. No extra fires, man. I shake the pump, then pressurize. In 2014, we would see 410 members drop a Tim Westwood crib session. And in that same year, 410 would take up the drill genre with rappers such as BT, TS, and Rendo, along with other rappers. Which, if you do your history, then you'll know that those guys are pioneers in their own right in UK drill music. So in late 2014 and the start of 2015, 410 members would put out legendary music, which is still highly rated in the scene, such as No Hook, Four Door Coming and Civilians, but it wouldn't be until the 7th of September 2015 where we would see why Rendo and AM put out their first song on YouTube titled Hammers, which in 2020 is looked at as a legendary song moving forward, and seeing as this was one of their first songs they put out, they were ones to watch in the coming future. Again, from now, I'll only be referencing AM and Skeng for context of the video. So at this point, 410, by the end of 2015, in my opinion, had developed their own sound, which was similar to that of 28's, which was an in-your-face, energetic feel to their music. Of course, the beats were produced by the likes of Quiet Pivot, who really started off this new wave of the new UK drill sound. Now, of course, we can't forget the likes of Khan Hill, who at the time was probably the biggest producer in UK drill, but if we look to 2020, we see that Quiet Pivot definitely has had a bigger influence moving forward than Khan Hill. Also, what separates 410 from 28 with this sound was the variety of different voices with the likes of TS, Rendo and AM which really brought something new and refreshing to the scene. In December of 2015, Y Rendo and AM would release Kick Down Doors which currently has 1 million views and very early in their career as a duo they would release Truthwear which would be a direct response to 6-7's diss track Truth by R6, ST and YSJ. After releasing various other songs throughout 2016 which included the likes of Think Again Part 1, we would then see the pair release their first mixtape titled Baghdad and personally this is one of my favourite UK drum mixtapes of all time and if you haven't heard it I highly recommend that you go and check it out. After the mixtape dropped I believe this is where Y Rendo would change his name to Skengdo and he alongside AM and other 410 members would drop songs such as a Millie Rock remix which takes aim at Harlem Spartans and 6-7 and do it for the 4s. So at this point 410's name was ringing out in the streets kind of like how OFBs are right now. We all know the same 
thing about each age group from OFB has a rapper and back in 2016 this was 410 and this meant going into 2017 we would see the street beef with the likes of Harlem Spartan Titan and of course this meant that more shots would be taken at them which we've already seen up until this point anyway. So as we enter 2017 this was probably the year that brought AM and Skengdo to the forefront of UK draw music and honestly in my opinion they have to take the crown for this year. Now I know it's a bit of a controversial one because the likes of Kennet and where it started no hook and kent nizzy were dropped by harlem spartans and i think it's safe to say that all three are legendary songs but if we take a look at am and skengdo's catalog for 2017 then i think you're going to be in for a bit of a shock that all this fire had dropped that year and maybe you'll see why i crown am and skengdo kings of drill for 2017 so in january they would drop crash in february they would drop no lotion and foolishness in march they would drop a tim westwood crib session and am would drop his single no filter in april they would drop amsterdam and their legendary mad about bars in may they would drop time is money in june they would drop soft in july they would drop a behind bars freestyle in september they would go on to release paris in november they would drop did a did bow with tux and of course they previewed macaroni and i remember in the comment section everyone was waiting for this one to come out including myself and then in december of 2017 they would go on to release two bunny the mixtape would drop a fire in the booth and would release do it and crash with m24 from 150 or gbg of course throughout 2017 they went on and released even more music but the ones listed are the ones to me that crowned am and skengdo kings of drill in 2017 and now you can see why i give them this title so going into 2018 this is where skengdo and am would once again go on to have a massive year but it would also come with its controversy and i would personally mark 2018 as a somewhat downfall for the duo now this isn't me claiming that this year would mark them becoming totally irrelevant because even in 2020 I don't think that this is necessarily the case but of course with other rising talent and the controversy that surrounded the year for the pair as we take a look into 2018 you'll see exactly what I mean. So in January of 2018 they'd be coming off a mixtape and a bunch of what's now looked at as classic drill songs and would start the year off with a bang when they would link up with Zone 2 to drop a Voice of the Streets freestyle and they would hop on a remix of S Wavy's song Do It Like. After this Oh Boy drops his infamous song What Do You Mean which is a direct Dish track to AM Skengdo and 410, but a few days after this, AM and Skengdo would go on to release German Swerving, and it wouldn't be until the start of May 2018 when the attempted EP would drop, followed up with videos for the three songs which were on there, that being Attempted 1.0, Attempted 2.0, and What Do You Mean? These would all be direct shots back at Oh Boy and would include direct disses to Harlem Spartans and Cuckoo. Soon after, Attempted 1.0 and Attempted 2.0 were taken down off YouTube for obvious reasons, and it would be these songs which would cause a heap of legal issues for them moving forward but we'll get more into that when it becomes relevant earlier in the year though february to be exact skengdo and am would fly out to america and in june one month after their attempted ep had dropped skengdo and am would go on to release the music video for what a feeling and to my best knowledge this was the first time anyone had flew abroad if not abroad at least to america to shoot a drum music video although in my opinion it wasn't too raw drill and had a mainstream vibe to it on august the 19th 2018 the pair would drop the visuals for hunters but only five days before this on the 14th of august 2018 this would be the start of some issues which would hinder their career for the foreseeable future as you guys know in the spring and summer of 2018 moscow 17 members gb and incognito were murdered and also sa from harlem spartans was murdered and if you guys have never seen my cases series in series one we covered all three murders in depth but when we took a look at those cases we seen that it was said allegedly zone 2 members were involved in the murder of gb although no one has officially been charged with his murder and it was said that a man from peckham although not affiliated to zone 2 had killed incognito and of course had beat the case and in regards to the murder of sa be seen how after sa allegedly tried to ride out on a 150 gang member it was said that his gun jammed and he was subsequently stabbed as a result and again no one has been charged officially with his murder well as we've just seen none of these incidents involved members of four and this was actually backed up by claims from the Metropolitan Police after recent research but nevertheless the Met wanted to bring a gang injunction against Skengdo and AM due to reasons we'll get into later on and in county court they had to prove that not only before 10 a music group but that they were also in a gang and in turn this meant that they could place that interim gang injunction against them. So what is a gang in the eyes of the law? Well the Home Office defines one as a relatively durable 
predominantly street-based group of young people who engage in a range of criminal activity and violence, laying claim over territory and being in conflict with other similar gangs. Now, while this remains the Metropolitan Police's official definition, it was seen as too limiting by police units hoping to use these injunctions as some gangs don't lay claim to territory. They argued rather they operate drug networks out of town or as you guys will know, county lines. Adding, some don't have defining rivalries with each other and to allow for flexibility in applying for these gang injunctions, new legislation in 2015 redefined a gang as simply a group of three or more people who share a characteristic that enables identification of them by others as a discernible group. So trying to prove in court that 410 were a gang and not just a musical group, the police would blame them as being part of the problem in regards to the heightened violence and murders that were going on in the local areas. In regards to the murder of SA, upon doing some research for this video, I found out some new information. It was said in court that after the murder of SA, shots were in fact fired into homes of which police believed to have belonged to 410 members. In regards to the murders of GB and Incognito, although the police did not blame 410 directly for these incidents, they said the music and the culture they was involved in played a massive role into bringing the deaths upon them. In court, going into more depth about AM and Skengdo's lives, they would go on to say gang related or otherwise, at Notting Hill Carnival in 2017, AM was stabbed in the arm, and it was heard that even when they was in court fighting the gang injunction around this time, Skengdo would go on to be stabbed in the back, arm and chest, a short distance from his home. Lambeth police used hearsay evidence to argue that these stabbings were acts of gang retaliation, even though no arrests were made for either attack. The police also listed 410 members' offences, which were mostly for possession of weapons, and it was said that eight people had such convictions. Skengdo and AM both had one conviction for possessing knives, Skengdo in 2014 and AM in 2016. In regards to Skengdo, he would go on to say, I was foolishly carrying this for my protection, as there was a lot of tension in the area at the time. It was also heard that one 410 member, not believed to be Skengdo or AM, had robbed 10 school children, and another was alleged to have put a Harlem Spartans gang member in critical condition by attacking him with a metal pole in the waiting room at Thameside Prison. Detective Inspector Luke Williams said, people accept they are a part of the 410 group. There are previous convictions of other members of the group and these two, Skengdo and AM, have previous convictions for weapons possession and have been subject to serious violence themselves. In my view, that quite clearly brings together a coherent group of people that I would say is a gang, a group of people committing crime. In court though, Skengdo and AM's connection to gang-related violence was merely implied, with the pair going on to say that most drill groups contained dozens of young people who identify under a certain label or are connected by an estate or local area, going on to say for them it was ever only about making music. As this was a civil order and not a criminal charge, all police would have to do in court is show that on the balance of probabilities rather than beyond reasonable doubt, a person had engaged in, encouraged or assisted gang-related violence, which includes threats of violence as well as acts, and that an injunction is, more probably than not, necessary to prevent future violence. So, in a nutshell, it basically meant that the evidence in the case is opinionated, uncooperated speculation where hearsay evidence is used rather than actual evidence that is beyond reasonable doubt that points to a specific thing, which in this case would be that AM, Skengdo and 410, by doing certain things and releasing certain music, heightened violence in the local areas. So, what did this proposed injunction mean, you might be asking yourself? Well, this meant that Skengdo and AM were prevented from writing or performing songs that mentioned the whole spot under its members, directly or indirectly. The used attempted 1.0 is a prime example, which of course directly addresses the rivalry with Harlem Spartans, and in court transcripts, it would go on to say that the song discussed perceived betrayals by AD, Nags and Lowski. In response to this, AM and Skengda would go on to say they weren't trying to base their careers around beef, and AM would add, there were a lot of disses coming our way, but we wouldn't entertain it. At one point, I thought, you know what, we'd address all the situations in one go, and make attempted. If anyone wants to say anything after that, there's no need for it anymore, refer back to that. The injunction also proposed that the pair should be banned from entering SE11, the Harlem Spartans perceived territory of Kennerton, which also meant that they couldn't go into an area of roughly two square kilometres, which was a few blocks from their home, or using certain food shops. The police
police's original application called for a ban from SE12, a postcode that includes the South Bank, London Bridge and Waterloo stations, but this was based on the barely credible claim that this was also the Harlem Spartans territory. The police themselves admit they were in legally uncharted waters, pushing the boundaries of how expansive their orders can be. The police also asked that the injunction prohibit all communication between AM and Skengdo and 11 other members of the 410 group, some who were lifelong friends from primary and secondary school. On August the 22nd, 2018, Skengdo would put up a Snapchat regarding the situation that read, the feds done me so wrong, I can't lie, unavailable until further notice. And it was confirmed at that point that the police were pushing for a ban on the duo to make music. Roughly a week later, Skengdo would put this video out, clearing up the situation at hand for the fans. Guys, sorry for the letdown, man. Honestly, man, just trying to do, you know, you're just trying to do good. <laughs> but the feds ain't having it. The feds ain't having it, man. They're really trying to get us, man. They're really trying their fucking hardest to get us. Let me show you something. We're moving straight. And this is what they don't understand. So they're doing all of this shit. Man can't even be around the brothers. You're buzzing. Man's getting asbos from ends that I go on a daily fam. What the fuck? Don't make no sense. Let me show you that. Let me show you that. So after this, I do believe certain things were dropped from the case, that being them entering SE1 and of course them communicating with each other. But of course, rapping and performing certain things and entering SE11 was to still go ahead. So moving forward, AM and Skengdo would have to lighten up on certain things and wouldn't be able to be as cruddy as they once were in regards to the music that they released. But either way, the music that they did put out after this, with me personally, I was more than satisfied with. After being dealt a massive blow in August, of 2018, it would only be one month later where they would link up with Chicago draw legend, the man himself Chief Keith, and would go on to release Pitbulls, and to this day I have to give the pair massive props for being able to do this because even after being dealt a massive blow like this, they were still able to go on to do great things. The following month, on the 12th of October 2018, they would go on to release a new mixtape titled Greener on the Other Side, which of course included songs Hunters and Pitbulls, which they had already released, and the mixtape was overall rated high by fans. So after having a massive 2017 and a big 2018, despite the legal issues, AM and Skengdo would be touring the UK and it would be on the 10th of December 2018 at their London Coco date, which would once again see them in deep waters with the law after this performance. <laughs> So as you guys know, we've gone over the interim gang injunction that was brought against Skengdo and AM, and as you know, one of the terms of the injunction was not to write or perform any songs that mentioned Harlem Spartans or its members, with the prime example being used in court was Attempted 1.0, and you guys guessed it, the police managed to pick up on the fact that they performed Attempted, and this time for the first time in UK music legal history, two artists were facing jail time over a song that they performed. So after videos surfaced of their performance online, AM and Skengdo were notified that proceedings would commence over the breach of their injunction, which at this point in the timeline would be January of 2019. They was to appear at court to agree the final conditions of the original injunction, and in addition to this, they were then sentenced for breaching it, and it was heard that the injunction was to stay in place until January of 2021, and they were sentenced to nine months imprisonment, which would be suspended for two years, which meant if they breached at this time, they'd be going straight to prison to 
serve the rest of that suspended sentence. So, now their legal issues were out of the way, they was now in the clear. Throughout 2019, they would release a decent catalogue of music, but at this point, with the rise of OFB Youngers, another UK drill talent who were in fact allowed to be more crudier with their music, it seemed as if Skengdo and AM wasn't in the spotlight as much. Although again, they had a decent catalogue of music with releases such as two solo songs from Skengdo, that being No Doubt and Game of Thrones, and a solo of AM, that being 3 plus 4, they would also go on to release Crash 2.0, 3J Slap It, Trappin' and Stackin', Crash GBG, A Daily Duppy, and would go on to release a further mixtape, that being Backlight We Never Left. Once again, this mixtape was received well by fans, but in my opinion, it wasn't as hyped as the last two before that, and I believe that was due to the music injunction and, of course, rise of newer artists. Which brings us to 2020, which, in my opinion, out of all the years that they've been in the scene, has probably been their worst. Now, granted, they released EU Drillers, and honestly, once again, they broke down barriers, so again, nothing but props to them, but nothing that they've put out in 2020 so far, including the mixtape, has really gained any attention, and again, I do believe this is down to the music injunction. Away from the project, if we take a look at their other bodies of work, they've barely even been able to get 500k views on a video. So as we can see, Skengdo and AM are not having the best 2020. Now let's go back to what I said at the start of the video, do I feel like Skengdo and AM are not as relevant as they once were? Yes I do, but do I think they'll be at the forefront of the genre next year? Yes, I do. As you guys know, their music injunction is up in just over half a year, and you know what that means? They're pretty much free to rap what they want. Of course, we know that drill music can still get taken down, but legally, there's no repercussion from it anymore. And added that Mizzle Mac is now out of jail, and there's a lot of buzz bubbling around Harlem Spartans, I think it's safe to say that next year, we'll be seeing the music beef between Harlem Spartans and 410 rise once again, bringing both groups back to the forefront of UK drill music. I do think if AM and Skengdo never got hit with that music injunction that they probably would have continued the way that they was going with releasing raw drill music even though dabbling with different sounds but that small bump in the road in turn had a massive impact on their careers in the couple years that followed now with that being said on may the 22nd this year am tweeted i waited to compete against the best in this ting so no excuses about people being in jail debut solo project incoming hashtag crown me in my honest opinion i think you should release this next year when the injunction is up and then we'll really see that old AM that everyone's been missing and after the release of that project I really think that him and Skengdo will be back at the forefront of UK drill music. So now that I've taken you through Skengdo and AM's journey through drill music do you think that in 2021 they can once again be at the forefront of the genre? Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the UK be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell spin your boy 800 show and I'm out.